What's going on guys, Billy here, and one of the most frequently asked questions that I get here on my YouTube channel is what is a good beginner drone? Now two months ago I would have said the Tello because of its small form factor, price range, and all the features that came included. Now if someone were to ask me that same question I would say the MJX Bugs 3 Pro. It's a bigger drone with GPS and boasts a long flight time. Not to mention it's a close match to bigger drones like the DJI Mavic and Phantom series. That means that in the future if you want to upgrade to something a little bit bigger, you already have some pretty good experience flying something similar. Now the price point of the MJX Bugs 3 Pro is $169 without the camera, so if you're someone that just wants to learn how to get up in the air and fly, this is going to be a perfect match. Something that you have to remember while watching this video is that this is a toy drone, and although it might not look like a toy drone, all of MJX's drones are toy grade, and in fact, while I was making this review and flying this, I almost forgot that it was considered a toy because the performance and flight time are both great. Again, the reason I'm making this video is that so down the line, if anyone asks me, hey, what's a good beginner drone, they can come back to this video and see that the MJX Bugs 3 Pro is a great beginner drone. Now, if you're familiar with my reviews, I try to go as in depth as possible covering every little single thing that I can think of. Also I break the video up into different sections so here are all the sections of this video. There's going to be timestamps in the description. If you guys want to jump around I'm not going to stop you. You can come check out a few things and bounce if you have to but I figured I'd put that there for you guys just so you can jump through and see what you want. Alright, so first up, the design of the Bugs 3 Pro reminds me a lot of the Phantom series from DJI. It has the tall landing gear lifting the body of the drone up to make space for the camera. The LEDs are the same strictly design on each arm, and the body is overall large, which makes this drone not as portable as something that can fold. If you did want to fit this in a backpack, you could do so by unscrewing those legs. In fact, you could fly without the legs totally if you wanted to, but you can't really use the camera underneath, so you'd be restricted to line of sight flying. A couple of key things that I noted about the design is the large LED on the front, which looks nice and adds functionality so you can see the drone better. The propellers screw on without the need for a screwdriver or really any tools for that matter, which is just a great touch. The quality of the plastic seems cheap compared to more expensive drones that feel more robust. Now there is of course a reason that this is as inexpensive as it is, but if you do accidentally crash the drone, it feels like it would stand up to even the worst of falls. The final thing that I have to mention is the battery, which is placed on the back, and as soon as you plug it into the drone, it boots up. There's no power switch, so once the battery goes in, it's on. This is definitely something that annoys me, but I've gotten used to it over time. The performance of the Bugs 3 Pro is a little bit tricky to gauge because when I looked online on MJX's website, on a couple of other websites, I couldn't find the top speed of the drone. Now with that being said, I feel like it's a little bit sluggish, it's a little bit slow when I'm flying, it's not as agile, and I would guess that maybe the top speed is anywhere between 16, 17 miles an hour, but overall, it's just not like anything I'm used to. Being a one-man show here, making these videos, it's hard to fly the drone and film it at the same time, so I hope that this kind of gives you an idea at how the drone flies. Looking at this as a beginner drone, I think it flies at a perfect speed, it doesn't have too much power, and it's still a joy to zip around the field. Now let's move away from the aircraft and to the remote controller, which is something that I am just absolutely in love with. There are a couple of things that I hate about it, and I'll get to those, but the coolest thing about it is the small screen that shows you basic telemetry, something that even the Phantom 4 Pro doesn't do. But I guess that is if you didn't get the Pro Plus model. That screen at the bottom of the remote shows you your GPS signal, your height, your distance, and also has little indicators for the battery life of your drone and also your remote controller, so you don't have to listen for just that beeping sound like with the Bugs 3. Now the rest of the controller is really simple like the sticks which control the drone, a switch to toggle GPS mode, a switch to toggle headless mode, a button for one touch takeoff and landing, a button to arm the motors, a return to home button, and a shutter button for shooting photos with the use of MJX's camera. It's really got everything that you need, but the reason that I hate it is because of the fake buttons. Yes, this controller has fake buttons. For example, these two buttons in the center don't work. They don't even move. The two buttons on the back are also fake, and even the antennas are fake. I would rather MJX not even include the antennas, to be honest. Another really small reason why I hate this remote is because it takes double A batteries. A rechargeable battery would have made using this drone a lot easier, but then again, it would have driven the price up. Overall, I dig the remote that comes with the Bugs 3 Pro. It's worlds better than the original Bugs 3 remote controller. It has a lot of good functionality here, a lot of good tactile keys that you can use. And I guess I can get past the fake buttons because the screen is just so awesome. It really does add to the whole flying experience. 
Now moving on to the companion application that is used with the NJX Bugs 3 Pro. It's not all that polished, it doesn't look all that beautiful, there's nothing really elegant about it in any way, but it just works. I mean, I guess you guys can enjoy this little flight I have here and look at what the companion application looks like. It just shows you everything that you need to see. It's got your battery life in the top right corner. It's got some telemetry right next to that. You can also check the status of your drone by going ahead and clicking on the settings icon, that little gear. There's really no different menu settings within here. You just look at this one screen and that's all, but really what more do you need with a toy drone? From that home screen, you can also select some of your intelligent flight modes, I guess I'll call them, where you actually use the GPS on the drone for the drone to fly itself autonomously. But I'm going to get to those later because I didn't really have the best luck with them. Now it's time to go over some of the miscellaneous specs of this drone. Some of the things that are still important but didn't really fit into the other categories. So again, all of the miscellaneous specs. The range of the Bugs 3 Pro is 2,600 feet or 800 meters, so we're looking at about a half of a mile. The flight time is an impressive 22 minutes with a battery that can hold 2,800 milliamp hours. When I was out flying, I didn't necessarily time each and every one of the flights, but I can tell you that I was up in the air for a really good amount of time. Something that I absolutely hate when reviewing drones is only getting one battery to actually test the drone. So I had to keep going in and out, in and out as I was filming, but for this drone, I didn't have to do that all too much because the flight time of the battery and the whole entire drone is really good. Now this isn't like a miscellaneous spec, but it's something miscellaneous to talk about, and it's the charger, which is so cumbersome. It comes in four separate pieces, and the connection and battery are proprietary, which might anger some RC pilots, but I think I'm most angry at how many pieces are involved to charge just one battery. The biggest difference between the Bugs 3 standard or the original Bugs 3 and this here, the Bugs 3 Pro, is that this drone has GPS, which instantly makes it easier to fly. You've got altitude hold, you've got GPS assisted hovering, and you can also return to home with the tap or the click of one single button. So this drone right here is a lot more safe than the Bugs 3 because if you accidentally run out of battery, if you lose connection between the drone and the remote controller, if the remote controller dies, this thing will come right back to you and won't hover right where it's at. It won't fall from the ground, continue to rise. I mean, this drone overall is just a lot safer and a lot easier to fly. With all of these brand new features included with this new Bugs 3 because of its GPS, I set outside to do some tests and I want to quickly share with you my results. Just letting the drone sit there without any stick input, it did a great job holding its position like expected, although there was just a little bit of drift from side to side and just a little bit up and down. Now onto the return to home tests, I used a landing pad to mark the location that I turned the drone on at and where I took off from. I did three separate tests from different distances away and the drone came really close to the landing pad and was just off. I mean this very last example right here, I was so close to the landing pad. I still think that it performed great, especially because it does not have sensors on the bottom to assist it down like some of the other drones have. Taking a closer look at the Bugs 3 Pro on its entire journey back to its home point, it's going to rise up to 15 meters or 50 feet if you're below that, and then it's going to make its way towards the home point at about a medium speed, I would say. Now, if you've got the drone pointed away from you, like the camera's pointed opposite the home point, the drone is going to come back any which way it's faced, so don't worry if it starts to fly backwards. Now, once it gets to that spot in the air just above its home point, it's going to pause for about 10 seconds and then come back slowly down to the ground. It's actually really impressive how I guess elegantly it comes down despite having no sensors on the bottom. What really makes this a great drone for beginners is all of the different fail-safes implemented into the aircraft. It's going to alleviate a lot of different problems that new pilots might face. So for example, maybe you're not good at gauging your distance yet, you go a little bit too far and the drone loses connection, it'll come back to you. And let's say maybe you're not timing the battery properly, it's not like it's going to fall out of the sky. The drone is going to come back to you when it knows that the battery is too low. Now there is an absence of obstacle avoidance sensors on this drone, and I know that new pilots might feel safer with obstacle obstacle avoidance sensors on their drone, but you've got to remember, this is a toy drone, it's robust, it's going to be able to be replaced for a cheaper price than something like a DJI Phantom 4 Pro, and also I think that if you're a new pilot, you might want to learn not to trust those obstacle avoidance sensors, so don't kind of use that as a crutch 
when you're flying. So it's great to learn without the obstacle avoidance sensors. So like I said in the beginning of this video, the Bugs 3 Pro has some new flight features because it now has GPS built in where the drone gets to fly by itself. But here's the thing, you're gonna need to buy an MJX branded camera that plug directly into the drone via an included micro USB cable to actually use these features. It also comes with a phone holder for the remote so that you can view the Bugs Go app. The range on the camera is about like 820 feet or about 250 meters, which means you can't really make the most of the full range of the drone flying FPV. Really quickly, I thought I would touch on the quality of the camera. Uh, so right off the SD card, the quality really isn't anything to brag about, and it is shaky because there is no gimbal, but it serves its purpose. If you want a higher quality camera, you can always use a different kind of action cam, maybe something like a GoPro Hero 6 if you wanted to. So in coordination with the Bugs Go application and the MJX camera, you're able to take advantage of those intelligent flight features on the Bugs 3 Pro. But here's the thing. They suck. I'm not gonna tiptoe around it. They're just very bad. You've got follow me, point of interest, and sort of like a flight planning waypoints mode. Uh, so I tried the point of interest. That works fine. It uses the GPS in your cell phone, marks that as sort of the bid point, and then from there, it'll just do a circle around you. It's not the smoothest footage ever. It's not like something you're gonna do all the time. It's kind of fun to see the drone fly around a circle by itself. That's the only one I could get to work. When I tried to do follow me, I had the drone sitting there right in front of me. I had the camera pointed at me. I hit yes for follow me and the drone just kind of drifted to the side, totally turned away from me and I had no idea what was going on. And this happened a couple of different times every time I tried, so that just doesn't work. And then after that, the third thing I tried was the flight planning option. And it said I wasn't able to submit data because I had no data. So at that point, I was fed up. I stopped using these little GPS tricks or GPS intelligent flight modes. They work great on the DJI drone, some of the more expensive ones. So if you guys want to learn intelligent flight modes, you guys might want to wait until you get a more expensive drone. They just suck on the Bugs 3 Pro. So now for my final thoughts on the Bugs 3 Pro after just bashing its little GPS intelligent flight features, Putting those aside, this is a great drone. In fact, I would say that this is an amazing drone, especially for the price point. $169 this is gonna be the perfect beginner drone. It's safe, it's got GPS, altitude lock. I mean, really everything you're gonna look for in a more expensive drone from something like the Mavic and the Phantom. And this drone is overall gonna get you perfectly acclimated for any drone that you plan to upgrade to. I wish it was faster, I wish it had a little bit more punch, but then again, I always forget this thing's a toy drone. I can't be expecting all that much out of it. It's perfect for beginners and it's just downright good for the price. Now, speaking of price, it's not available anywhere yet. I think that this might be an early model, an early unit. It's not available on MJX's website. It's not available on GearBest or any of those popular RC websites. So right now, I can't tell you to go and buy it if you want to, but I will say on top of any links coming out from MJX or any place that is selling this, I'll throw that in the description once it's there. So if you're watching this video in the future and you want a good beginner drone, go and check it out. Uh, but guys, hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, I'll talk to you later. Peace.